Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is Gotham City Imposters from Monolith Productions. This game normally retails for $15, but I picked it up as part of the Batman franchise pack during the Steam summer sale. I think when all is said and done with the DLC that was included in the pack, I probably paid between $7 or $8 for this game. Which is, yes, over my $5 limit for this channel, but who cares? It's a great game and I really wanted to show it to you guys. I've been playing it on PlayStation 3 as part of my PlayStation Plus membership. I get it for free. And while the game has endeared itself to me, there is one problem. I really suck at FPS with a controller, so I've been waiting, chomping at the bit, at the opportunity to get this game on my preferred platform, which of course is the PC, and it has arrived. So, I picked it up and am absolutely happy with this game. Unfortunately, if you look into the internet jibber-jabber on this game, what you'll see is a lot of stuff from around the time the game came out, saying things like it's a bad PC port, it lacks an FOV slider, it has problems, etc, etc. Well... A lot of that has changed, and I think this game deserves a second chance in the eyes of the public, so that's one of the main reasons that I wanted to do this video. They have added an FOV slider, they have improved the PC port. While there is no dedicated server uh, access, there is decent matchmaking. I don't really miss dedicated servers in that sense. Uh, I normally get with a group of people and just play five or six games, and then I'm done. So uh, I'm not missing dedicated servers. I do think that the game uh, could use them. I mean, what game couldn't, but... Overall, I think they've improved it a lot since release, and it is definitely worth a second look. If you see this game on the Steam sale, again, either this game or the Batman franchise pack, it's definitely worth your money to look at it. I hope that this video will convince you of that, but I am telling you that with my mouth and the words that are coming out of that mouth. So what's this game all about? Well, it's an irreverent, crazy, silly FPS. It doesn't take itself seriously. Shades of Team Fortress 2 in there, but it also has the modern... Uh, sort of progression system, the breadcrumbs, the trickling out of precious, precious upgrades that you've come to expect from games like Call of Duty. So you'll level up and you will slowly get items and uh, un weapon unlocks, mod unlocks, progression, progression, progression. It's wonderful. It keeps you playing and you can play a long time. I'm not sure how far the levels go in this game, but I've seen someone who's level 491. So pretty high. I don't know if it caps out at 500 or 1000 or if there is no cap. Uh, but it's pretty crazy, so <laughs> let's take a look into the game here and uh, let's get right down to business because I don't want to keep you guys forever. I've got uh, 8 or 10 minutes of gameplay that's going to follow this introduction. Basic stuff about the game. Let's talk about the secret identity. This is where everything is housed. You got your loadouts, you got your costumes, calling cards flash on the screen when you kill somebody. Gangs? I have no idea. At some point you get invited to a gang and then they say that you're progress in games will help your gang, but I don't know what it does, and mascots are just cute little things that follow you around. So let's take a quick look at the loadouts. You unlock custom loadouts pretty early on, which will allow you to start putting together your, uh, your weapons of choice, your gameplay style of choice. Prior to that, there are a lot of pre-built loadouts that will give you access to weapons and things that you don't necessarily have access to through your custom loadouts. So use those pre-mades until you get a, uh, an idea of the style of gameplay that you want. So you have a ready weapon and you have a backup weapon, and those can be interchangeable. Uh, you can have a, a, a two assault rifles for your ready and your backup. It doesn't matter, whatever. Uh, large weapons will encumber you unless you are uh, one of the larger body types. So a skinny body type will be encumbered by a heavy weapon. Uh, so most of the time you'll see them using submachine guns, pistols, swords, stuff like that. Uh, this game is pretty wacky, as I said before, to the point that this is my backup weapon. It's a blunderbuss that shoots a parrot. That's right. Shoots a parrot. Yep. So support items are one of the one of the two ways you can customize your gameplay. Uh, they are all sorts of different things. You have body armor, which I'm using because of my play style. You've got things like bear traps that wait for folks, grab them, hook their legs. Uh, shurikens, hatchets, boomerangs are all thrown items. Uh, you've got your energy drink, restoring a little bit of health. Your care package, restoring ammo, motion sensors, airspace denier. Uh, pro tip, if you play against me, get an airspace denier uh, because it really borks my play style. So... Uh, Use an airspace denier to counter me. Now, gadgets really start the process of uh, customizing how you play. 
I use the glider rig. The gl glider rig allows me to sail around on updrafts which are scattered throughout every level and dive bomb down onto targets. I love that gameplay style. It's the sort of style that I love, so everything about my loadout is built to support that. You have things like the grappling gun, which can allow you to get to uh, higher elevations, good for snipers. Uh, roller skates allow you to go around quickly with momentum, jumpy boots, all sorts of stuff. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Character, not too much going on there. Customizable body types, and the body types do have effects on things. For instance, the mighty body will go slower on roller skates than the speedy body. The speedy body will do less damage with a glider dive bomb than the mighty body. Basic understandable, nice. Fun facts are basically perks. Uh, yep, just basically perks. And Rampage is basically a kill streak. I haven't seen any reason to change off of the Eagle Eye Rampage. Uh, I'm easily able to do 1,200 points of damage pretty regularly because of my play style. It allows me to zoom in and uh, kill two or three players at once. That usually gives me enough to trigger Eagle Eye. So, uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen any reason to unlock any of the other Rampages. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Nice and simple. Keeping it simple. You can edit your costumes. All kinds of stuff in here. You can see my wonderful Lucha bat. But again, all kinds of things in here. Everything down to the logo on your chest. And uh, your cowl, your cape. Everything, everything. Just everything is editable. I have to show you my favorite cowl. It's got to be the Cardboard Crusader. Yes, it is a box with a Batman face drawn on it. The thing I love about the box, if you watch as he turns his head, there's a packing slip on the side of his head, and there's like a flammable notice on the other side, that's great, or this end up notice on the other side, that's great. You can see all the different uh, customizations. This is truly about making your character look the way you want. Nothing here is going to affect gameplay. Yeah, so the rest of it is pretty cosmetic. Calling cards, gangs, and mascots doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything in the game. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the game. We want to get into some action right now, and uh, we want to experience the gameplay. For game types, you have Team Deathmatch, you have Fumigation, which is basically control points, you have Psych Warfare, which is essentially capture the flag, and you have Bounty Hunter, which is kill confirmed. you got some offline challenges and a training initiation mode, which I would recommend you do just for the comedy that's in it, if nothing else. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into some Team Deathmatch, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I say this is an irreverent and silly FPS. Here we go, to action. Look at my Lucha Batman there in that amazing costume. Uh, so let's take to the skies. Here we go. You know, I kept talking about the glider rig and my play style in air quotes. Uh, well, this is it. Uh, this is how I enjoy playing. I like to glide around the levels, look for fools to dive bomb down onto, and then kill them. So uh, this will mean that you're going to see this a lot. You're going to see me running this pattern, looking for targets. Oh, here's one, but I missed. Oh, then I reveal my position by shooting at him very poorly, and the superior player guns me down. Oh, I wish I had that back. I just wish I had that back. The thing about that is those uh, light-bodied guys will die in a single hit from a dive bomb. And actually, you're going to get a chance to see that in action right here, because I get sweet revenge. Nice. Gotta love it. Let's pick up another kill just for stat padding while we're at it. Hey, why not? Avenged a teammate, all that jazz. Great. Uh, now, I'm going to gush about this game, certainly, because I'm in sort of the newlywed stage with it, having a lot of fun with it, and, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that it's a perfect game. It doesn't mean that I think it's a perfect game or that I'm deluding myself to believe that it is. Sure, it has its problems like most uh, games. Every game has little... Uh, little issues here and there, but I think for the most part this game is well balanced and it accomplishes something that so many games end up lacking. It lets you play whatever style you want to play within, you know, of course the constraints of what styles are available. Uh, but every stat or every loadout seems to be viable to one degree or another. You know, you can get kills with all of them and that's a great thing. So here you're going to see me picking up a prize box. The prize box will randomly spawn throughout the round in different parts of the level. You pick it up, get a nice little buff. In this case, I grabbed a damage buff, but I can't find anybody to kill with it. And unfortunately, by the time I round this corner and do find somebody to kill with it, I have found a superior player who is going to gun me down in cold blood just like that. 
Uh, you're going to see he has a sort of a Riddler pattern on his gun. Uh, I have uh, dinosaur stickers on my gun. <laughs> These are just customization things that you'll uh, you'll get while you accomplish feats and whatnot. Some of them are available as DLC. I think the dinosaur stickers are DLC. Uh, but if you just use your gun and accomplish feats with it, get headshots, uh, kill people with it, deal damage with it, you'll unlock these uh, camos, these uh, customizations for your gun. It's just another little thing that helps to uh, helps to make your character his own person. So uh, you see these little yellow things that are rising up? That's actually the body odor detector on my gun in action. And that's really great because it can give you a, a nice heads up when somebody's around. If they're not appearing on radar, uh, you can get a really nice heads up uh, when an enemy is nearby. And I've really, really found that to be extremely useful because I'm not always uh, looking at my radar 100% of the time. And uh, I love this kill right here because that guy just, he had no idea what happened. That's why I love playing this loadout uh, with the glider rig. You know, that's the sort of stuff that I enjoy. And the really wonderful thing about this game is that's what it enables you to do. Because like I was saying earlier, everything seems rather balanced. The game itself allows the, you the flexibility of playing whatever you want to play. Do I want to play a big giant muscle bound dude who glides around and jumps on people's heads? Great. Do it. It's viable. Do you want to play a ninja who goes invisible and emerges from the shadows to cut people in half with a sword? Do it. Great. Because it's viable. Do you want to play just pretty much a standard soldier with an assault rifle who doesn't do much of anything else but shoot people? Do it. Oh, nice knife kill right there. You notice that I actually missed the dive bomb because I hit the box next to him, but then managed to get the knife kill, so I was kind of happy with myself right there. But uh, back to what I was saying, you know, do you want to be a healer? who uh, buffs and supports your teammates. Great, do it, because there are weapons that will heal. There are items where you can drop out uh, ammo packs. You can use the goggles to target. You know, you can be a real true support player if you if you want to. Uh, do you want to carry around a rocket launcher and treat this like, you know, freaking Quake or something? Go for it. Why not? Because you can, like that guy did right there and his buddy who killed me with a submachine gun. Uh, do you want to run, run around like Rambo with an M60? Uh, and uh, belts of ammo and uh, shooting shells everywhere as you uh, as you gun down foes, uh, you know, letting out your battle cry of then go for it, do it. It's 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 there. It's it's viable, and that's really the thing that's hooked me about this game. Uh, all these different play styles are in. They're all workable. They're all viable, and uh, they're all fun. And that really is the important thing. But little illustration here of how you should play to your particular playstyle. I go inside for a moment here. Why? I'm a big giant dude that flies. I'm not a guy who should be going indoors. And I do head inside there and uh, I pay for it. And that's the thing that you do need to remember. Yes, you can play any style that you want to play, but you have to play to that style's strength. And in this case, this is the strength of my style of gameplay. I need to be out here in the open. Well, in this case, I was getting shot, but I had like six health. But I need to be out in the open where I can uh, unleash my most powerful attack, which is my dive bomb. I am far less uh, viable in the constrained corridors of the insides of buildings. Nice dive bomb kill right there. Get a little... Uh... Man, that guy's got a lot of life. A little parrot action here. Love that. You can see the little damage numbers popping up off of him as my parrot's doing some work there. Got the world's longest reload right there. There you go. Got it and killed him. Unfortunately, I lingered a bit too long. Some guys came up behind me and they'll eventually finish me off just like that. So, uh, again, this game comes from Monolith. If you guys are unfamiliar with Monolith to uh, whatever degree, these are the guys who brought you Fear uh, 1 and 2. I remember them more for Blood and uh, Shogo, Mobile Armor Division, or what the hell was the name of that game? Anyway, it was like a first-person mech game released in the late 90s. These are the games that I remember Monolith for, uh, but they are still out there kicking and uh, continue to iterate on their LithTech engine. LithTech is uh, its kind of unfortunately in the shadow of the Unreal Engine, uh, but it is used on occasion. Uh, it's Combat Arms uh, engine of choice, as well as several other games. Of course, all the Fear games have used it. This game uses the current version. Nice little kill streak right there for me. Gotta like that. Oh, I got a parrot on my face. That's what it looks like when you get shot with the parrot. <laughs> Um, so I go in for some health, but I notice a guy up on the scaffold and get killed, so I evacuate to find another uh, another health restore box, and I see one through the wall there, so I'm going to head over there. But uh, yeah, Monolith, these guys are out there, they're kicking, they are uh, still working on games. Uh, they did the Condemned series, 
you know, they're a solid company. And uh, again, I really give them a big thumbs up for listening to the community and uh, making the changes necessary to get uh, to get uh, this game into a very playable state on the PC. So giant thumbs up for that. You guys definitely need to be checking this game out. Uh, Gotham City Imposters, if it goes back on sale, you got to pick it up. I mean, you just have to. Several of you already own it, and I think that that is super cool. But uh, if you do not yet own this game, I will highly recommend it to you. Uh, buy it. We can play some play some games. Add me to uh, Windows Live, Windows Games, Games for Windows Live, whatever the fuck it's called. You know, again, that service not interfering too much, so I'm not going to complain too much about Games for Windows Live. But uh, this is game, so we are finished here. Bats win. Unfortunately, I don't do well enough to make it onto the little brag screen here, so I can have my absurd-looking character do a silly dance. But uh, that is the game. We are done. Just about every uh, game that you finish, you will get some kind of accomplishment. You can see here I get a bunch of feats, unlocked a fun fact, etc., etc. This game does a great job with that trickle of upgrades. They do have that modern warfare thing definitely down for sure. So you're going to see everything here. You're racking up score. You're racking up costume coins, all that great business. Wonderful. You always love that, that loot treadmill, so to speak. Just uh, that, that treadmill of achievement and accomplishment. It keeps you interested to one degree or the other. So, I really don't think there's anything more to say about this game. You can see my lackluster score right there. This has been Gotham City Imposters. Again, highly recommended. Look for it during the Steam sale. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.